Hi everyone, my name is Michael and I work as an optometrist here in Canberra. And I've been asked to make this short video about an everyday practitioner's guide to how to perform gonioscopy. Some of the things we'll cover in this video is information on what gonioscopy is, uh, as well as lens variations. And we'll cover some techniques and troubleshooting that you'll probably regularly encounter. So with all that said, let's jump in. So this here is my own gonioscopy lens that I use in practice. There are a few key features that drew me into purchasing this lens in university. Firstly, it is a four mirror lens, and that allows me to assess the angle by simply moving my slit lamp around. Second, it doesn't have a flange, and that allows me to perform indentation gonioscopy. Thirdly, it has this handle, and I, I particularly like the distance my resting hand is from the slit lamp forward rest to the patient's eye. Oh, and in case you're wondering, this is the name of my lens here. So typically you would hold your gonioscopy lens like you would fundoscopy. With the handle, I'm able to travel what feels to me like a greater distance, and it generally feels a lot more comfortable for me when assessing all four quadrants of the angle. Some of the clinical indications I look for when doing gonioscopy are of course narrow angles. So I'm looking for a Van Herrick that appears less than or equal to 0.3, uh, as well as secondary glaucoma signs such as pseudo exfoliative material and pigment dispersion. Family history of glaucoma and history of blunt trauma to the eye are also important information to find out. If you find any of these clinical findings and would like to proceed with gonioscopy, let your patient know. I usually explain it in lay terms and say something along the lines of, I would like to do some further examination with a diagnostic lens on your eye. The procedure roughly takes about a minute. Would that be okay? Once you get informed consent, let the patient know you'll be using some anesthetic eye drops. Let them know how to minimize side effects with double dot technique or forceful closure of their eyes and make sure to check for contraindications before installation. Now, visco tears are important when using a flange gonioscopy, as it acts as a buffer between the patient's eye and the lens. Four mirror gonioscopy doesn't require this, but I'll just show you here out of interest for correct application. You want a small blob of the visco tears in the concavity of the gonio lens. Uh, it's important to make sure there are no large bubbles in this blob, as this will obscure your view of the anterior angle. You may also consider using visco tears if it will help reassure the patient that the gel is touching the eye rather than the lens. Get the patient set up normally as you would for a slit lamp examination. Make sure the room is as dark as possible. Center your slit lamp beam on the patient's iris and you're looking for roughly a medium height beam on roughly 10 to 15 times magnification. So step one in the setup is I get the patient to look down and then I hold my finger to the bony part of the patient's superior orbit. Once I have that, I place the lens on the patient's superior bulbar conjunctiva and then I get them to look straight back ahead at my other cheekbone so that I'll be able to view the angle. With any luck, you'll hopefully see the angle like so. So once we have the lens on here, my usual procedure will begin with looking at the top mirror, which will get us a good look and view at the inferior angle here. Once I've assessed the inferior angle, I'll rotate my beam horizontally, and then I'll move across to one of the horizontal angles, in this case the nasal angle there. And again, moving across and looking at the right mirror, which will give us a view of the temporal angle. And lastly, I'll rotate the beam back to vertical to finally assess the superior angle on the bottom mirror. 
Let's now cover some specific techniques related to gonioscopy. The corneal wedge is a technique that helps the examiner identify the anterior border of the trabecular meshwork in patients where the border is difficult to see, either because of a lack of pigment or because of excessive pigmentation. And you do this by making the slit lamp beam very thin and bright and offset the oculars. Through the gonioscopy lens, the thin slit of light appears as two lines, one that strikes the surfaces from the inside of the eye, crossing the iris and the angle. The other line, which looks broader and fuzzier, is created by the slit of light striking the external cornea. That second line curves in along the interface between the cornea and the sclera at the limbus to meet the first line at the anterior edge at Schwalbe's line, thus making it clear where the cornea ends and the meshwork begins. With the view achieved, you want to think about how to grade the angle. Recall either using the Spathe system or the Schaefer system to describe what you see based on the view you achieve with the corneal wedge. So indentation gonioscopy is a strategy that helps determine whether the angle closure is the result of the iris being in apposition or touching the angle, or is the result of the iris actually being stuck on the angle via you know, peripheral sinicae. It's a great tool for diagnosing plateau iris as well. And as you can see here, it involves applying pressure with the lens to the central cornea, which drives the iris posteriorly. This technique is easy to perform with a 4 mirror lens, but isn't feasible with a 3 mirror lens. Firstly, the area of the 4 mirror lens that contacts the cornea is much smaller than the total surface area of the cornea, whereas the 3 mirror lens has a larger area. Secondly, the 4 mirror's lens area is relatively flat, so when you push against the cornea, the cornea indents more easily and the iris moves more readily. The three mirror lens, in contrast, vaults over the cornea and touches the eye on the sclera. Lens tilting is a really useful way to get a different view of the quadrant you're examining. Let's say you encounter an angle that is obscured by a really steep mid-peripheral iris. Tilting the lens in the direction of the angle you want to view, or having the patient look slightly in the direction of the observation mirror, will allow the light rays to pass over the obstructing iris and onto the angle, allowing a view. Here I'm tilting the lens quite dramatically to show you the different views you can achieve. Now let's cover some common troubleshooting that you may encounter. It's really easy to get lost in the angle, and you may at times find that your once clear view of the angle disappears. Make sure the patient is still fixating at your opposing cheek or ear by kindly reminding them. Your setup is critically important to getting a view, so make sure you get a good grip as you hold the top lid up before popping the lens on, and make sure your patient is always touching the forehead and chin rest. Double check you're not aplanating the cornea too hard and accidentally performing indentation gonioscopy. Tilting the lens, I find, is a really good beginner way of finding where you are in the angle as you assess each quadrant. Don't forget about this technique. And that's all there is to it. Don't forget to communicate your findings to the patient in lay terms. In this case, I find getting a schematic from Dr. Google handy as we go through any particular findings. But don't be afraid of developing your own brand of explaining the findings. For example, you could use a laminated printout of a gonioscopy image or anterior segment OCT, or other resources like the Center for Eye Health Chairside References. Routine gonioscopy for all glaucoma or glaucoma suspect patients I will usually do once every few years. If there's angle recession, potential for angle closure or signs of pigment dispersion or pseudoexfoliation, I'll perform gonioscopy more regularly. Check out your NHMRC guidelines for a good idea on how your clinical signs dictate the frequency of your review. I hope I've given you some handy pointers and tips on gonioscopy that you can use in practice. Feel free to shoot me a message about any questions you might have or anything I may have not covered. Best way to contact me is via my LinkedIn account found here. Thanks for watching.